Okay, good morning, everyone. My name is Juan, and today, um, along um, fellow PhD candidate Serena, we're going to talk to you about surface active synergies, corrosion inhibitors for hydrate management. So the conclusions that we came through after um, conducting our research can be separated in two different sections. The first section is more focused on um, how an FFCI, this being a film forming corrosion inhibitor, can actually reduce corrosion rates. So we find out a 77% reduction um, after injecting 100 ppm um, of a specific FFCI um, for 48 hours. Um, we notice that um, the effect of the FFCI is quite immediate uh, after injection, um, as well that we achieve 50% um, reduction in corrosion rate after allowing the system to uh, pre-corrode. This is uninhibited for uh, five hours. Then the second section of the conclusions is more about how this same FFCI actually prevented hydrate agglomeration. And one of the main conclusions that Serena is going to work with too is how we achieve 50% reduction in hydrate cohesive force uh, when we inject one weight percent of this FFCI. And finally, I think the main like takeaway of our presentation is going to be how we can use this set of experimental methodologies with bench apparatuses that we have in our lab to actually evaluate um, FFCI performance on especially multiple interfaces, which is the key here. And this is something that we can apply for brownfield chemistries and greenfield chemistries as well. So the whole idea of um, this project came back from, um, I think, a year and a half ago uh, in a Tybac symposium with fellow student um, Nasir Khan. Um, he was measuring the effect of um, using pure MEG and regenerate MEG for um, hydroformation experiments. And he actually found out that um, some contaminants coming from an FFCI uh, in the regenerated MEG have some effect on, on um, in this case, what I'm showing you on um, reduction in torque. So he found out a 50% reduction in torque when uh, we inject 5 to 10 weight percent of um, regenerated MEG. So on the graph here, um, what I'm showing you is um, for a pure MEG system, the black dots are the pure uh, water baseline. Then you have 5 and 10 uh, pure MEG weight percent in the uh, blue and Red. And then with the regenerate MEG with the FFCI um, surface active contaminants, we achieve 50% reduction down here uh, in the fractional change in torque. Um, as well as like uh, regenerate MEG helping to uh, stabilize the dispersion over here, as you can see. So um, starting from that point, then um, the next thing is like, okay, what is an FFCI and uh, how it actually help us reduce corrosion, right? That's the first step. So, well, FFCIs are field forming corrosion inhibitors. They're usually commercially available and they have complex mixtures. And they usually have a field forming um, inhibitor molecules that can be quaternary ammonium compounds, a solvent package, and um, surfactants that are aimed to kind of like this um, um, aid in the dispersion in the acid environment. And um, these FFCIs are commonly employed, um, can be commonly employed coupled with pH stabilization control or as a transition coming from pH stabilization control to a more like chemist, a chemical control for the corrosion. And in this experiment, we wanted to focus on CO2 corrosion, this being the main issue here in Australia, when we have like um, gas coming from our producers feed of around 10 to 15% uh, uh, on CO2. Um, so when usually the, the approach for um, this particular phenomenon is just by um, for pH um, stabilization control, just increasing the pH to allow the formation of an iron carbonate um, scale layer. Um, so that's pretty much the way that we conducted corrosion experiments, just with uh, sweet corrosion um, on, on mine. So the way that um, this corrosion inhibitor works is pretty much by absorbing into surfaces. So you have a polar head group, um, a polar head group and a hydrocarbon um, chain. And uh, the way that it works is that the polar head group just attach or absorb into the hydrate speed uh, um, in, in the steel papillon wall. And um, then the hydrocarbon chain kind of like displace um, the water up from the surface. And this is important because the water is the one containing um, um, the, the diffusion of the ions that are going to attack our steel and steel electrons and cause the, cause the degradation of, of, of the steel as well. So at low concentrations, usually the inhibitor um, absorbs to the steel pipeline wall and, it's, and the tail is kind of like a parallel or tipped to the steel surface. As we increase the concentration, then uh, the tail kind of like goes perpendicular to the, to the steel wall. 
And um, these um, FFCIs can be organic or inorganic compounds. And depending on the concentration, they still are employed at, small, at low concentrations of around 0.1 weight percent. And the way that we, we can actually evaluate the performance of this chemistry of these FFCI is by um, using <clears throat> quite sensitive potential cell and electrochemical cells. So this is a work that we have been um, kind of like collaborating with the people from Curtin University in the Curtin Corrosion Center for um, more than two years ago, where they kindly allow us to use their laboratory and their equipment for our experiments. So um, this is a scheme of what an electrochemical cell looks like. Um, it's pretty much a one liter glass cell. When we put in our electrolyte, for this case, is one weight uh, per sensor in chloride solution. We have the CO2 coming in and CO2 coming out, um, hot plate and a magnetic stir. Um, we control the pH or kind of like monitor the pH actually for this experiment with a pH probe. And we have a thermocouple to um, provide um, heat to, to the system. And the beauty of this cell is that actually allow us to form an electrochemical circuit. Um, so for this case, our um, steel S specimen that we're going to work with is carbon steel X65, which is the most common used material for um, tie packs. Um, pipes. Um, so that um, coupon is going to be a working electrode over here. Then we place a reference electrode and um, between these two applying an electrochemical technique that is called the OCP or open circuit potential. What we actually do is measuring um, the free potential or the corrosion potential between the working electrode and the reference electrode. And then for the second electrochemical technique, we actually um, place a counter electrode when we can actually apply um, small current and then we can calculate corrosion rate in millimeters per year just applying a Faraday's law. Another features of um, our experiment, well, we work at um, 80 degrees C temperature. This is pretty much to accelerate the, 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 the electrochemical reactions inside the cell. We have a steering of 300 RPM and our exposed area is just one square centimeter for our um, carbon steel sample. Then the first test that we did was, um, okay, just inhibited system. So we saturate our system with CO2. We allow the formation of carbonic acid. We decrease the pH and we just um, uh, start measuring our electrochemical techniques. So what we observe from the graph here is potential um, and corrosion velocities so or corrosion rate um, during the 48 hours of the experiment. And for a honey unheated system, what we can observe is a small increase in the um, corrosion rate coupled with um, um, kind of like a decrease in the potential here, and when you start seeing an increase in the corrosion rate, kind of like a steady size over here. So we obtain an increase of one, um, one millimeter per year in the corrosion rate after 48 hours, with a final um, corrosion rate of um, 0.3 millimeters per year. And on the right hand side, what I'm showing you is pictures of how the steel coupon look before, after um, the test, so at time zero after we grind it with um, silica paper to uh, 1200, and then uh, how it looks like at the end of our experiment for an unlimited system. So one of the few things, one of the first things that we can notice over here is that how the microstructure after the corrosion uh, changed. So we have different kind of like um, spots where degradation is severe or not. For example, highlighting here is a, um, a location where we have like high um, corrosion uh, activity. At the same time, um, we notice some black dots over here that I'm highlighting, uh, which are a clear indication of localized corrosion or pitting attack, right? Which is a more aggressive type of corrosion that, that you see from corrosion. Then we move into injecting 100 ppm of this FFCI. And what we observe from the graph is a decrease in the corrosion velocity or the corrosion rate. So we achieved 77% reduction in the corrosion rate just by adding 100 ppm into a system. And on the graph, as you can see, it's like the difference of um, the microstructure in the carbon steel um, after we inhibited the system. So it's a more uniform type of corrosion. You don't have like the same kind of like um, different um, corrosion degradation states. You have um, as well though some different uh, spots. They look darker, but they're quite different to the one that I showed you previously. This is due to, it can be due to contamination of oxygen, so oxygen spots over here, or just um, crystal precipitation of the sodium or the potassium from a reference electrode. And then finally, what we wanted to evaluate was um, the effect of the FFCI after we allowed the um, corrosion go for um, uninhibited for five hours. So what we can see here is that after the five hours of um, 
um, corrosion, we can see an increase in the potential uh, as soon as we injected the FFCI. This is an indication that the absorption of the, of the FFCI at the steel surface was, is quite immediate, as well with the couple and the um, corrosion velocity of the corrosion rates. So um, we observe um, an inhibition action of 50% um, um, by reducing the corrosion rate after we inject um, the chemicals. And as well, if we go back to the pictures, then what we can see is that the corrosion that um, did occur was more uniform, even though we have five hours of um, pre-corrosion for, for our samples. So after performing pr pretty much the um, evaluation of how this FFCI works in a corrosion environment, then it comes the motivation of coming back to our previous Nasir, Nasir work is that how then this FFCI can actually interact um, by re reducing um, high cohesive force. And then um, for this, we want to focus particularly on, on cohesive forces, when we know that the, me the main mechanism of, um, uh, of agglomeration and cohesion is the formation of a, um, a water bridge coming from the quasi-liquid layer that um, usually high is had and very close to contact from this bridge that loads all the free energy that allows for like cohesion force um, to increase then the way that usually agglomerates work is by um, kind of like absorbing into that um, higher shell and kind of like preventing the water to form, reducing high surface free energy and making high particles oil wet, right? And then kind of like the structure of the, this AAs is quite similar, um, just with a hydrophilic head group and the same um, hydrophobic tail. So the motivation um, and pretty much the experiments that Serena are going to talk to you about is how this FFCI that we know that works in the corrosion environment is actually going to perform in the hydro oil and the water oil interfaces that are the key for like agglomeration and, and plugging in, in hydro parts. And um, for that, I'm going to introduce Serena. Thanks, Juan. Hello, everyone. I'm Serena. Now I'm going to talk about the effect of FFCI on gas hydrate. In order to test the FFCI performance on gas hydrate formation, we use two main operators, including interface tensometer and micromechanical force operators. So we know that FFCI is one type of surfactants. So for surfactants, usually it can reduce oil water interface tension but how effective of this specific FFCI can affect the oil water interface tension. To answer this question, we use the, the hook needle IFT technique to get the oil, oil water interface tension with FFCI in the system. So from the left, set, left hand side of the slide, it shows the setup of this interface tensometer. So usually I put the uh, mineral oil, which in the light phase in the steerage, and then I put FFCI water solution in the pool out. So FFCI water solution is the heavy phase. So the software itself can detect the curvature of the mineral oil droplet in the cool bath. And we based, the, we based on the curvature of the mineral oil droplet, combining with the density difference of the two phases, we can get the oil water interface tension. So the right hand side of the figure, it shows the result of the interface tension as a function of the mass fraction of the surfactants, including FFCI and IA, the first generation of IA. So focusing on the on the figure, the purple rectangles are for the interface tension um, with first generation of AA. So we can say the final interface tension can be reduced up to 10 mil, 5 millilitres per meter by only injecting around 0.1% of first generation of AA. Moving on to the yellow rectangles, which is which are the result for FFCI. It can reduce the final interface tension up to 10 million per minute, which is quite similar to the first generation of AI. But obviously, higher dosage is required in the system for FFCI to achieve the similar result to reduce the oil water interface tension. So this result can be confirmed by our previous study. By Nasia, one of our previous PhD students. His study was focused on regenerated MAC. He compared the regenerated MAC with the pure map and the current industry IAs and trying to figure out like what's the source of the 
contaminants he observed from the interface retention uh, measurement. So from the left figure, we can see if we just like simply injected around two or three million, two, two or three weight percent of pure mag in the system, it didn't change much on the uh, interface retention of oil and water. But if we injected the same amount of regenerated mag, it significantly reduced oil water interface tension, which is quite similar to the regenerated, uh, sorry, which is quite similar to the current generation of the industry IAs, but obviously higher dose is required. So he concluded that regenerated mag contains the surface active contaminants mainly from FFCI. So FFCI can reduce oil water interface tension and it's similar to the uh, to the industry II. So now we have one question. Does FFCI has have the similar effect to the AAs to prevent gas hydrate formation? To answer this question, we use the micromechanical force apparatus to test the cohesive force of, of hydrate particles. The right hand side of the slide is shown the setup of the experiment including microscope, two cantilevers, one cooling jacket, which we also show on the left hand side of the slide. So the cooling jacket is usually connected to the chiller and to cool the cell down to form hydrate. And inside of the cooling jacket, there is an experimental cell which is usually filled with liquid cycle painting. The reasons why we use liquid cycle painting are first, liquid cycle painting is one of the hydrocarbons and also cycle painting hydrate can be formed can be formed at atmospheric pressure and it forms structure to hydrate. Usually we use the pull of trials technique to, to obtain the displacement, displacement of the hydroparticles which is shown on the, on the equation here. So multiplying by the spring constant which is dependent on, on the materials of the cantilever, we can based on Hooke's law to calculate the cohesive force of hydroparticles. Here I showed one big, uh, example video about the pull-up trials to help to help you to have a better understanding. So when I pull up the top cantilever, actually the two hydrate particles will still attach to each other for a certain distance. We call that the displacement of hydrate particles. So moving on to the right figure, this is the result for the cohesive force as a function of the mass fraction of surfactants, including first generation of first generation of AA and FFCI. So the yellow rectangles are the result for first generation of AA. We can see that this first generation of AA can reduce the cohesive force from 4.3 to 1.5 mN per meter by only injecting around 0.02 weight percent. So moving on to the FFCI, the red, red diamonds, I point out the mass fraction that Huang used for corrosion rate measurement. So he injected in injected in the system by 0.01 weight percent of FFCI, the corrosion rate was significantly reduced, but the same amount of FFCI injected in the system actually didn't reduce much on the cohesive force of hydrate particles. But further increasing the mass fraction of FFCI in the system, it can reduce the cohesive force. And it can achieve the similar result to the first generation of AA. So it can reduce to up to two millimeters per meter by injecting around one weight percent of FFCI. So same similar effect to the first generation of AA. Till now, I talk about the effect of FFCI on oil water interface tension and cohesive force of hydrate particles. And maybe you noticed that I said several times that FFCI has the similar effect to the first generation of AA, but how similar? Is there any difference? So if there is no difference between those two chemicals, can we just like simply inject FFCI in the pipelines Sorry. to prevent both corrosion and gas hydrate formation? To answer this question, we estimate the hydrate oil interface tension and combining with the oil water interface tension, try to answer the previous question. So here, the left figure, it shows to you the result for the first generation of AA and the right figure shows the result for FFCI. Let's see if there is any difference between those two chemicals. And here on the figure, we can see that there is one new term called interfacial packing. So the value of interfacial packing for hydrate oil intervegetation and oil water intervegetation can give us the idea about how this specific surfactant can pack on either hydrate interface or water interface. So usually lower value, lower interfacial packing means greater density of this specific uh, 
of this specific surfactant on that enterprise. Or in another word means that lower value means tighter packing of that specific uh, surfactant on that interface. So first, we focus on the, the left figure for the first generation of AA. So we can see for hydrated oil interfacial tension, the packing value shows 15 square angstrom per molecule. But for oil water, it shows 60 square angstrom per molecule, which means this specific AA packs tighter on hydrated interface. And also, we compare these two, in, two um, data sets for hydrated oil interface tension and oil water interface tension. So we simply pick one um, mass fraction, let's say 0 0.02, uh, sorry, 0 0.01 here. So for 0.01 weight percent of FFAA injected in the system, it significantly reduced the hydrated oil interface tension. But for oil water interface tension, it didn't show much reduction. So it means this specific AA prefers to pack on hydrate interface. So it prefers to like reduce the hydrate oil interface tension instead of oil water interface tension. And also still compare these two data sets, the blue data sets and the black data sets. So the gap between those two data sets can give us the idea that actually this specific AA doesn't cause any problems for emotion formation because the gap between those two data sets are too wide. Moving on to FFCI. So still first compare the value of the interfacial packing. So this in, these two values are quite similar, but obviously still oil water interfacial packing is still like smaller than the, that for hydrated oil interfacial packing. So it means FFCI packs tighter on water interface. This is the difference between FFCI and AA. And also this FFCI comparing the two data sets so they are too close to each other. So we can we can't get any idea about like FFCI packs tight pack shows the preference packing on hydrate or water interface. So we conclude that FFCI interface neutral. And also maybe it will cause some emotion formation problems because the two gap two data sets, the gap between two data sets are too close to each other. So this is the difference between uh, AAs and FFCIs. Definitely FFCI can reduce the oil water interface tension and the cohesive force, and it can improve AA performance. Maybe it can improve AA performance. Later on, if we have to like, can combine those two methodologies, we can check the synergies of AAs and FFCIs to see if like, if we can just like achieve like, they do inhibition performance for one simple um, chemical injection. To conclude, our experimental methodology, so combined for both corrosion and gas hydro formation uh, measurements, they are able to evaluate surfactant uh, performance on multiple interface, including the steel interface, water interface, hydro interface. So for steel water interfaces, which more focus on the corrosion rate measurements, so which is Juan's work, Using this specific FFCI, it can reduce 77% um, sorry, on the corrosion rate for 48 hours after 0.01% injection. And the same amount of FFCI injected in, um, injected in the uninhibited system, 50% reduction can be achieved after five hour pre corrosion. So moving on to hydrate oil and water oil interface tension, which more focus on gas hydrate formation. 50% of hydrate cohesive force reduction can be achieved with 1% of FFCI. And interfacial packing of uh, water and oil can be reduced up to 10 millimeters per meter with 50% of FFCI. So comparing the amount of AA required in the system, preventing performance of FFCI is similar to the first generation of AA, but higher dosage is required. Yeah. So that's all. Thank you.